So I'm here with Bill Hang, who to anyone who watches this channel or is interested in craniofacial development, orthotropics, any of these areas, Bill should need no introduction. He is, I guess, in the US, what my father was in the UK, within the orthotropic field. Um, you know, Bill, you, 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 you're, the, you're the father of many people's career. Yeah, and you've got a lot of people into this. Yes. You have. Yes. And we're, we want to have a little chat because we're due to run this camp, launch this campaign. Right. Or we might, by the time you see this, we might have launched this campaign. Right. Uh, the title of the campaign, campaign is Why Are Teeth Crooked? Right. The underlying theme is prevention. Right. Prevention is the only way to go here. Yep. Uh, the treatment which, you know, I owe your dad a huge debt of gratitude because he's changed my career. Uh, I've been able to make beautiful faces and open airways, but it, 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 once they get to me, it's really too hmm. late. Prevention is really the only way. I, there's a group in the United States called the American Academy of Physiological Medicine and Dentistry, uh, which basically uh, the, the, the people who formed it realized that essentially they were fighting forest fires, treating sleep apnea and, and sleep disorder breathing and temporomandibular joint problems on adults and they realized that that didn't start overnight it didn't just happen overnight and they recognized that it started very early uh, prevention is the only way if, if, to put it in their words they said we need to stop fighting forest fires and start preventing the fires in the first place which means doing something much earlier they enlisted me to help with the orthotic aspect and I when I said yes I would do it I said really what I do is too little and too late for most people and we need to get in much earlier recognize it much earlier and and treat it much earlier that's why I feel strongly about myofunctional therapy strongly mm. about getting pediatric dentists involved strongly about getting uh, uh, pediatricians if we can get across that medical barrier that seems to be hard for us in the prevention mode uh, but clearly, from a public health perspective, there's no way that we can pay for the medical problems that are associated with sleep disorder, breathing, and all the other issues that go on. We see a, a huge increase in ADHD, which n now most people really understand it's not really uh, ADHD, it's, it's, it's really a sleep disorder, breathing issue. Uh, Dr. Stephen Sheldon in Chicago has said that for years. And we see that what happens uh, if we are un if we don't help these kids. I uh, attended a meeting recently where Dr. David Gozell from uh, University of Chicago talked about the the ramifications of of sleep uh, apnea in kids, and the fact that it's, many of them will lose 10 points of IQ. Uh, and he says that's the difference between a college education and no college education. Hmm. And then he this huge. Yeah. Huge. And then he put it in monetary terms. For every uh, drop in one point in IQ, that was a loss of $170,000 of, of uh, uh, lifetime income. So uh, if you lose 10 points in IQ and don't have the college education, you've essentially lost $1.7 million of lifetime income. Hmm. Now, that gets somebody's attention, and, and if, an, if a parent doesn't understand that, a parent who wants their kid to have a college education, and they realize, okay, he's lost this, these IQ points, and he's not going to get it, well, what's more important? Uh, you know, buying the kid a brand new car when he's 16, or, or paying for his SAT prep course so he can do well on his college prep exam? No, really. It's helping the child to grow a, a great looking face, which really means an airway that's adequate with uh, his ability to sleep properly and have refreshed sleep so that he does well in school and he looks good and feels good and uh, he performs well athletically. I mean, all these things are important to kids today, uh, but we're falling way short, uh, sadly. Mm, very I, I'm the biggest advocate of myofunctional therapy ever. Uh, it's interesting because <laughs> I was I was told as a child when I had braces at age 11 and 12 that I was a tongue thruster, and I was given this little list of exercises to do, which I laughed at. And as a little Midwestern boy in Illinois, I looked at that list of exercises, and I looked at the basketball hoop next door, and I 
went out in the yard and I played basketball. Uh, <laughs> I got into dental school and I learned about tongue thrusting. It meant a little more to me. But various things happened. I went into orthodontic training and where I trained, they basically called myofunctional therapy nothing more than snake oil. And so I wasn't into it at all. I didn't think it ma mattered at all. And then when I started to understand what your dad was doing and realized that it was really all these issues with uh, oral posture that were causing faces to grow poorly, and I knew that that caused airways to get smaller, I realized what a big deal this was and that the end game always is to have the child be a nasal breather. Uh, teeth together, tongue of the palate, lips together. I feel like I have a button I push right here in my chest and I could just rip that off, you know. I, the mantra. I, yeah, I, I, it's a mantra. I, I just do it all the time. And so I've gone from being trained that myofunctional therapy was essentially snake oil to saying, oh, it's like the most important thing ever. I view it as the front lines in the, uh, in the battle mm. for uh, attractive faces and uh, good airways. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to Rome here uh, just after this meeting and I'm going to be talking about this very issue my transition from being a complete non-believer to being I, by my own admission I, I don't know that anyone's more of an advocate of my functional therapy than I am I, there, mm. a, a day doesn't go by that I'm not recommending uh, some form of myofunctional therapy or butaco breathing uh, yeah, for my this patients is another one. all the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and well, we can say my functional therapy is ranging. I mean, there's a hundred different ways of doing this. Exactly. And I, I don't want here to, to advocate any particular method. No, there's loads no. of different methods, loads no. of different schools. Right. What, ha what, what really matters is at the end of the day is that the child uh, has their teeth together, their tongue of the palate, their lips together, and you know, I've trained myself to do this. I didn't get this long face by the, by growing up that way. Mm. I grew up the other way, and uh, I don't want to see my grandkids grow up to have a long face that I have, and I don't want to see anybody's kids grow up that way. I want to see them healthy, mm. uh, and so whatever it takes uh, to do that, I'm I'm a big supporter of that. Of course, this prevention costs minimal. You do nothing. <laughs> I mean, you know. What does it What does it cost to uh, to have a kid uh, learn to keep his lips together? You, the kids Shut play, your mouth. Kids, <laughs> yeah. Kids play video games all the time. Mm. Uh, I hope my, my kids didn't have them because I was such a mean father. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but in my practice, I, I have an agreement with my the, the parents. I say, okay, if, if Johnny's going to play video games and his mouth and his lips are apart even minutely, the rule in your house is that he will have a toothpick or a popsicle stick or a tongue depressor between his lips like that uh, so that it forces him to have his lips together and breathe through his nose while he's playing with that. So at least I view it as video games are, to me, are a total loss, but if indeed the kid's going to do it, at least we're going to going to make him a, a nasal breather. I, I started exactly that, Bill, and I'm now asking them to chew gum with their lips together. Okay.